Okay, so I wanted to do a quick follow-up video to the video that I put out earlier. Um, the sad world of Riley Reed. Uh, Riley is an adult entertainer for people who are unfamiliar with her. And, um, you know, people were asking me why I made that video. And, and, and the reason why is because she admitted to aring a child. And I have seen more and more stories lately about female pedos, like female teachers who are doing this to their young male students. Um, and just in general, it's like unacceptable. It's not okay. And, um, like that may be old news or whatever, but it's new to me. I just learned about it. So, um, yeah, I'm going to call it out and I'm going to cover it. You know, I have a problem with these modern women and their behavior. And I think it's sad. Yes. Like obviously, um, in an ideal world, you know, all those women would repent and come to Christ, but that doesn't mean that you don't call them out. Like, you know, I don't, I, I have compassion and patience, but only so much. You know, I don't feel bad for predators. I'm sorry, I just don't. You know, I think that a lot of people in that industry are damaged. You know, that maybe, probably all of them have had some kind of trauma happen to them or some kind of um, SA when they were children or something like that that kind of predisposed them to that behavior. But like, I don't want to hear it anymore. I'm sick of all of these simps and all of these people making excuses for these women, you know, that when they, they're adults. Ultimately, these people are adults. They're responsible for their own decisions and their poor decisions and their own behavior and the things that they do and the way that they talk about things. And, um, you know, y'all do need Jesus. I'll tell you that. Y'all need to humble yourselves. That is really, I think, one of the things that stands out the most. And I don't have a lot of female friends. That's part of it is because I'm not interested in that behavior and that conduct. There's nothing appealing to me about this thoughtery, whatever you want to call it, the narcissism, the entitlement, the grandiosity, the, the materialistic nature of it. There isn't anything appealing about that to me. You know, I, I would never want to befriend that type of woman in so many women these days are, they act like that. Just no dignity, no self-respect, no substance, no depth, no self-awareness. And that is annoying to me. It's obnoxious. And when I do these videos and I talk about this stuff, it isn't because I'm hating on somebody as somebody accused me of. It is called tough love. I'm trying to be honest with these women because people don't tell them the truth. They tell these women what they want to hear, you know, and I don't think that that's fair to them. I don't think it helps them. When you aren't honest with people, you are doing them a disservice. So I might have some harsh things to say for people like Riley Reed and others, other women like her. But it's for their own good, you know? She is somebody that is out there influencing people with her content. Think about how many young men she's damaged, right? How many young men have watched her videos and it has warped their perceptions about, like, intimacy and love and sex and how they view women, right? How many young girls have seen her videos and have been influenced by that and think that that's how you need to act to get a man to love you or something. It is the exact opposite of love. It is commodifying yourself. It is selling yourself. 
you know, and it's degrading yourself and devaluing yourself. Ultimately, the, those women, those kinds of women, they think that all they have to offer is their looks. They think that that's, you know, what makes them special and they don't realize that their looks fade. I mean, they eventually will once they hit the epiphany phase and they start to hit the wall as they get older, you know, and, and I am not saying this as somebody that is like exempt from this, guys. I'm not. I'm a delusional woman as well, but like what helps is when people try to like keep you accountable and make you like self-aware. You know, I have, luckily, I have friends who tell me when I'm acting crazy or something or yeah, like they'll straight up tell me, you know, and then I I do self-reflection and I'm like, oh wow, that that's true. I was being ridiculous or I was um, out of line or something like that, you know? I think that for women, like, <laughs> being self-aware doesn't come natural to us. It just doesn't, and that's okay. It's okay to say that. Men and women are different, and women have things that come natural to us, and we have things that that isn't, like, so natural to us. Being self-aware is one of those things that does not come natural to us. We're very, like, naturally self-absorbed. I don't know why that is. It's just a thing, you know? And so I think that um, there's just, I feel that the, the way that our society is set up now is it favors women and it lies to women and it tells women that it's okay to act like that or to to look up to somebody like a Riley Reed that that we elevate these people um when we shouldn't you know that is a cautionary tale and i don't care that she's married now and she has a child i don't think she should have been allowed to have children i feel so bad for that child because i see her as somebody that is uh, very unstable and very mentally warped and disturbed and i think that's very sad but we have generations of people who cannot have like real relationships it, it, they don't know how to connect with each other you know they there's been so many attacks on us from all different angles like attacks on the family um on men and women there's a war on men there's a war on femininity and just like for young people it's so hard for them to just like survive like to have any kind of healthy relationships the media glamorizes like toxic relationships and and then i think that pornography has been horrific and horribly damaging i think it damages people for life it gives people dysmorphia and it warps their thinking about like what sex should be what it should be like what intimacy should be and you know they it it makes it trivial and casual when it's not and women cannot engage in that behavior and come out undamaged you know maybe men can maybe there's an argument that men can engage in casual sex and hookup culture women cannot and I don't care what any of these girls say, they're lying. They're in pain. They're deeply, deeply damaged for the rest of their life. And it will be nearly impossible for them to form a healthy relationship with a man based on uh, mutual love and affection and to be just to be valued for who they are uh, as people. And it is really sad to me you know, and I, th I look at around and I see marriages failing. I see relationships fall apart if they even start at all. Most of these relationships are like nothing. They're not even having like real conversations of substance, you know. It's just, it's heartbreaking to me. And I don't really know like what we do about that as a society. But I do think that it is important to talk about it. 
you know, that doesn't make me a hater. I'm trying to help people. I'm trying to educate and inform people. I'm, I want to have my opinions be heard. I want people to value the things that I have to say. And that I think is my value is the fact that I am willing to say these things and I don't care what anybody thinks of me. You know, the Lord is all I care about and doing what I think he wants me to do and what I think the right thing to do is. And I think part of that is telling young people that like these are not the kinds of people that you want to emulate. This isn't how you want to act. This isn't how you want to be. This isn't how you be a real woman or a real man. You know, you don't treat other human beings like they're nothing, like they don't mean anything, like they're a commodity to consume and discard. That gets you nowhere. It's like, that's such a sad life. There's so much more to it than that. And, you know, these women are miserable. They are miserable because they've been told their entire life that they're special. And they've been told that they can act like men and they can run around and have sex with whoever they want and that that makes them empowered and independent. And none of that is true. You know, I wish somebody would have told me a lot of things when I was younger that I had to learn the hard way. But the thing is, is that I had to grow up pretty, pretty quick. You know, I grew up in a very traumatic environment um, with a crazy single mother. So like I have seen where this, the, where this ends, like I've seen people go down that road and I know what it looks like. I've seen, you know, a, a woman that saw a man as wallets and like resources and treated men like they were disposable and went through man after man after man, brought strange men to our home that she met online, slept around and how that damaged her and her life and endangered her children, you know, and she's still miserable and is like mentally ill. Um, she'll be alone forever. It's sad. I do not want to end up that way. I think it's sad to have to have watched that. And I see other people going down a similar road and I feel bad. And I want to say, don't do that. <laughs> you know, and if you have to be a little bit harsh sometimes, sometimes that's what it takes. You know, sometimes being nice to these people and saying, hey, come to Jesus. The Lord loves you. Like, maybe that doesn't shake them out of their fucking delusion. Because, like, I know what it's like to be deep in delusion. I was deep in delusion at many points and about many things. You know, I went through this phase where, like, I wanted to, I wanted to have, like, all of this, the knowledge, you know, all the secret wisdom or whatever. Like, this is in, like, my spiritual deception and all of that because I wanted to be able to say, fuck you to every single person that hurt me, you know, and, um... I thought that was the way to go about it. Obviously, that was wrong, but, you know, going through that, I understand the mindset of a lot of these people, like, where they're coming from, and it is a place of being, like, deeply hurt and angry um, and, like, wanting to lash out at other people or, like, hating yourself so you don't value yourself and you don't think that you deserve to be treated with dignity and respect and, like, a human being that is valuable for other reasons besides your body, your looks. You know, I, if you look at my videos on this channel, you're, all, you're pretty much always going to be seeing me wearing like a long sleeve high neck shirt. I don't dress provocatively. I'm not out here shoving my boobs in people's face because that's not how I treat myself. And it's not how I want to treat other, like, other people. I know what it's like for men. I know that that is, that provokes them. So I don't want to do that to them, you know? And I don't think women understand <laughs> what it's like for men when they dress like that and then get mad at men for looking at them, you know, when they're doing it for attention anyways. So I could talk about this forever, but the point is, is that I think it's important to call out delusional women um, to try to help them before it's too late for them so that they don't end up miserable and alone forever 
And I think that really they need to humble themselves. For me, you know, I was out on my own at a very young age. I was thrown into the street. My mother stole my identity. I had to sleep on couches. I had nothing. I had to fight to survive. And that experience is very humbling when you have to literally rely on the kindness of strangers to live, to not sleep on a street at night, you know, to sleep on somebody's couch or whatever. Like to have to ask people for help. That's hard. And it's not cool. And then to have to figure it out on your own and dig your way out of the hole, you know, that you're already in that when you're starting out literally at the bottom and you have nothing but a little suitcase on wheels. That's what you live out of. That's the amount of clothes that you have and you have nothing. <laughs> like, that's hard. Going without eating, you know, working doubles all day, every day, on weekends, like not having a day off. I know what that's like. I know what it's like to be in a position of, you know, at, literally at the bottom, like waiting tables or being a hostess or whatever. Like I've been there and um, I didn't have anybody to help me. And you learn very quickly, like about human nature, but you also learn like what's important and what isn't like all of these possessions, buying things. None of these things bring you happiness. Money doesn't bring you happiness. Like, you can't do anything with any of this stuff. What is it? What does any of it matter? It doesn't matter. And, like, once you've had nothing, like, you know that. You know that possessions are meaningless, you know? And, like, <sighs> yeah, there's so much more to life. And you appreciate just, like, small, simple gestures of kindness, little things that people have done for you. Like, that's a big deal. And you learn how to be grateful for everything that you have. And I think that a lot of these women could benefit from going through an experience like that and learning how to be humble and grateful um, for the things that they have and to appreciate things. You know, the entitlement has to stop. I'm over it. And we're, and just the way that people talk about other human beings, you know, the whole purpose of that video is because that woman laughed about Aring a child and nothing has happened to her and like I do think that's a big deal I think it's sad and I think it's disgusting and I think that it should not be considered hateful to point that out like really that's the world that we're living in y'all need to get your shit together I'm sorry but like you guys have problems if that video triggered you Ree and sneed